welcome to the Overtopia YouTube channel. You guys always catch me reading. Today I'm just brushing up on my dictionary skills. So, put that aside. Because today we're going to talk about standard of living and what it means. Now, standard of living, the definition is how rich or poor a country is. So if a country has a high standard of living, generally the people in that country are pretty well off. They have enough money for their needs. It doesn't mean everybody in the country is really, really rich, but it means the average person has enough money to get by and has money for some extra things and blah, blah, blah. Has nice things, has nice houses, can afford a car, blah, blah, blah. If a country has a low standard of living, it's the opposite. That means that a lot of people in that country are poorer. It means a lot of people in that country might be living in poverty, um, stuff like that. Now, Today in Obertopia, we talked about some indicators that would tell us whether or not a country has a high standard of living or a low standard of living. And so we're going to go into that today. Now, the number one thing that we talk about is literacy rate. Now, what is the literacy rate? Literacy rate is the percentage of people in a country that can read and write over the age of 15, over the age of 15. Now, if the literacy rate means how many people can read and write, most people assume that if a lot of people in a country can read and write, so if you have like 99% or 100% of your population can read and write, you would think that the standard of living in that country would be very high or would be high. You know, people would hopefully be able to get really good paying jobs if they can read and write. And usually this is the case. So usually if the literacy rate is high, the standard of living is going to be high. However, you can't only look at literacy rate when talking about standard of living. There's lots of other indicators you should look at. And we're going to go into that right now. Now, one of the other factors that you can look at when trying to determine the standard of living of a country is life expectancy. Life expectancy is the average age that people in a country live to. And again, it's an average, so if the life expectancy of, hmm, let's see, let's see, let's look at our chart, let's look at our chart here, United States, it's 77, if you can see that. Well, if the life expectancy of a country is 77, that doesn't mean people drop dead at 77, it just means the average age people live to is 77. Um, so, life expectancy, if a life expectancy is high in a country, and they also have a high literacy rate, you can say they probably have a pretty high standard of living. However, there are some countries, Haiti for example, that have a pretty low life expectancy, like 45 years, and that's pretty bad. And you, Just that number alone can tell you that their standard of living probably isn't very good. Another indicator you can look at is kind of a sad one. There's something called the infant mortality rate, and what that basically means is how many infants out of a thousand pass away and it sounds really sad but it's a reality and some countries have a really high infant mortality rate which means that there's probably something that's not right maybe there's not a very good health care system maybe the doctors there aren't really enough doctors to go around but if an infant mortality rate is high you can bet that the standard of living of that country probably isn't very good even if the literacy rate is really high Another indicator of the standard of living of a country is how many doctors they have per 100,000 people. If a country has a lot of doctors to go around, that country probably has a good standard of living because health is a part of standard of living. If a lot of people in your country are sick and there's not many doctors and it's hard for people to go to the doctor, then standard of living of that country might be pretty low. Finally, one last indicator we'll talk about today is how many cars people own. Out of a thousand people, how many cars? Now in the United States, the average is about 489 cars for every 1,000 people. And that takes into account in some cities, you might not need a car to get around. However, there are some countries, like Armenia for example. In Armenia, they have about two cars for every thousand people. Two. Two cars. That's crazy. Now, they might not need cars. So, you know, if they don't need them, they don't need to buy them. 
However, there might be some countries where they can't afford cars, and that would tell us a little bit about that country's standard of living. It's probably low if you need a car and you can't get one. You might have a low standard of living in your country, even if your literacy rate is pretty high. And in Armenia, the literacy rate is 98%, so they have a lot high literacy rate. So I hope this helps. Um, standard of living is just how rich or poor people are. It just tells us, you know, do they have enough money to live? If so, they have a pretty high standard of living. And just by living in the United States alone, our standard of living is pretty high. Because compared to some countries in the world, we enjoy a lot of conveniences that other people don't have. But it's easy to think, oh, I don't have what that person has, or I don't have these kind of shoes, or that kind of phone. So it's easy to think, man, my standard of living is low. But really, compared to a lot of other countries, we're doing pretty good. So I hope um, this has kind of explained the idea of standard of living, literacy rate, good indicator. It usually tells us, hey, the literacy rate's high. Standard of living is probably high as well. It's not always going to be the only indicator you want to look at, though. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.